Welcome. I'm Steve Adubato. We are uh, pleased to welcome back once again our good friend Michelle Sekirka, president of New Jersey Business and Industry Association. We have Michelle on on a regular basis to talk about a whole range of interesting items. Uh, Michelle, there are a whole bunch of things I want to talk to you about small business and, and how small business is dealing with uh, the Affordable Care Act and some other issues. But as we do this program, you just had a major conference dealing with women leaders in business. Talk about it. Yes, we hosted our inaugural Women Business Leaders Forum. Um, the event exceeded our expectations. You know, we were looking forward to having an opportunity to have some very dynamic women share stories, talk about building skills. The whole idea, the theme of this was um, gaining better visibility to the C-suite and to boardrooms, corporate boardrooms. Um, we know that we have made headway over the years. Women have come more up in the ranks. Mm -hmm. However, there's a lot more room, Steve. So only about 14% of C-suite are females among Fortune 500. There's a lot of room for movement. You know, I was watching um, um, our, our sister, our partners at uh, NJTV News and Mary Alice Will Will Williams and the team did a great report on this. And in the report, the Lieutenant Governor, uh, Kim Guadano, was speaking yes. there. And one of the things she was talking about was, and obviously you were right there, she was talking about the fact that the difference between a lot of men and women in executive business leadership positions is that she said, how many women uh, got their kids off to school today? How many women got their husbands off yes. to school today? <laughs> right. And all these women are raising yeah. hands. And then you went off and did your job as a leader, yeah. right? Absolutely. And you can relate. Absolutely. There's a lot, a lot of balance. Absolutely. I mean, I was a working mother my entire career. I have 23-year-old twins. And, um, <laughs> you know, talk about a balance every day. It's hmm. progress. Significant? No, there's absolutely, there's absolutely. I see it from my days as a young lawyer right. to, to where I am today in my career, and I see the generations that are coming up behind us. Um, I do have hope that there is more balance in the home in the next mm. generation between responsibilities around parenting. Um, it, that's what I observe. I hope it's real of what I observe. Long way to go. We still have a long way to go. Yeah. Absolutely. Switch gears. Uh, small business, big focus on small business. Yes. Dealing with the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as the ACA. Talk about it. Well, health care continues to be um, of concern to business. The cost of health care is concern. Businesses continue to provide very robust benefits for their members. So thing I always like to share is in a survey that we did last year, we learned that 70% um, of businesses continue to provide health care coverage to their, to their employees. 70%. Over 70%, well over 70% to their employees, despite the fact that they're taking a hit to their bottom line to do it. So what that tells you is they're willing to take less profit into their company in order to provide good benefits. And why do they do that? Because that's what attracts a competitive workforce. They know what it takes to attract a competitive workforce and good benefits do. But that's not sustainable, mm. Steve. At some point, you know, at some point, the cost just isn't sustainable. As we do this program in the fall of 2015, there's a survey coming up. Describe it. Our annual business outlook survey. It's hot on the street right now. Right. Um, so people can probably still go on our website and take advantage of it. I believe we have over a thousand responses so far. What is it? What does it ask? What's it trying to find out? We are trying to gauge um, how business is feeling about the economic climate in the state of New Jersey. We do it this time of the year because it helps to inform us in establishing our agenda for business for issues. 16. For 16, going into 16, yeah. So basically, you know, we'll get the results back. We will release the results at our December 8 public policy forum, where you will be joining us facilitating our legislative panel. To be clear, one of the things that we're doing, and, and I did it last year, it was great, is I wasn't great, the, the panel was great. We had legislative leaders, we had the Speaker of the House, we had the President of the Senate, we had the Republican leaders in the Senate and the assembly and talked about a range of business issues, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, the issues that are important to business. And so we talk about... What do you think they'll talk about? Taxes, mandates, infrastructure. I mean, these are creating jobs. You know, what we, what we need to get them to talk about, what we invite them to talk about, is how do we create jobs in the state of New Jersey? That's what we need to do. So we need good policies to create jobs in New Jersey. And, and I will say, in a very bipartisan manner, over the last six years, we've seen tremendous opportunity for business in the state of New Jersey. But we're still at the bottom of all the rankings. So yet again, another area where we have see, a lot of room to It's interesting, up. Michelle. You see great opportunity. Yes. You're, you're bullish, yes, clearly. Yes, absolutely. But you're concerned about the migration out... Yes. We lose some, right? We lose lots, Steve. We lose lots. You because? Oh, because of the cost, the cost of doing business and living in the state of New Jersey. So some um, startling statistics. Go ahead. Okay, over the last decade, $15 billion net in taxable income lost out of the state of New Jersey. Wait a minute, hold on, $15 yes. billion? How do we even get to that number? 
over the last decade, 10 years, $15 billion of income has left the state of New Jersey. So now think about if we would have the ability to tax $15 billion over the last 10 years and that the percentage of that that comes into the general fund so that the state could then put that money back out into the economy, maybe we wouldn't have some of the issues we have today. We have to do something about outward migration. Okay, but why would you be interesting? Why would you be so bullish and positive about the outlook if we've lost the 15 billion? Because that's rearview mirror. So what are we doing to change that? All right, the incentive programs in the state of New Jersey are attracting business. Those incentive programs are significant. You mean tax to make, incentive programs. Tax incentive programs to make New Jersey competitive to our sister states. You know, so people will talk about, oh, the state's giving away money. Yeah, there are those who say, wait a minute, Prudential, we're, we're, we have a big operation in Newark, sure. NJTV's in Newark, so we're very excited about what's happening in Newark. Yeah. Look at Prudential, they have this big, tall building there where they move down the street. Is that that big a deal? There are tax incentives involved and tax incentives that were used to do that, you say? I say, of course. It's a huge deal because they didn't leave the state of New Jersey, which is what they were which talking they about have. doing. Absolutely. You know, pe people say, J.P. Morgan Chase coming over to New York. Why are you giving the rich guys money? Because New York, they, Jersey City. Yeah, because they could have stayed in New York. Guess what? They're coming to New Jersey. And every time they come, they create jobs. But we're not, you know, we're not giving money away. Those tax credits need to be earned. I want to emphasize that earned. So how do you earn it? You create jobs. There's a whole formula. So you, you, you get a grant today. EDA gives you a grant. You have Economic to Development Authority. Economic Development Authority. And you have to perform. So you have a period of time within which to perform. And mm. when you create the job, that's when you get the money back. Now, mm. return on investment. So far, we've spent about $60 million has been earned. About $60 mm. million. What do we get back for that? About $730 million in reinvestment in the state of New Jersey. 1,900 jobs, okay? That's why I'm bullish on New Jersey, because we got good stuff going. We need time to see it play out. Before I let you out of here, uh, we're doing a series called Lessons in Leadership that uh, people know from watching us, but you also you know because it's also in your magazine. Yes. I'm pleased to, to be in there, this Lessons in Leadership um, column that's there online as well as in print. So I have to ask you, Number one lesson in leadership you've learned so far is? Oh, you know, have the skills. Education, know what you're talking about, always be prepared, confidence, empower others. Wow, okay, I'm gonna flip it on you. Biggest leadership challenge. Oh, challenge, you know, um, it's getting people into your sandbox. I'm all about collaboration, uh, not everybody is. And so one of my biggest <laughs> challenges is getting them all to play nice in the sandbox. Can't you just tell them this is what I want? Doesn't work that way. They got, I noticed you, around here. <laughs> you, you know what, Steve? You've got to create the environment that they want to come in the sandbox. I can demand them to jump in the sandbox. They're not going to perform. Doesn't they work got, that they way. got to want to come in. Compliance is not the bar. Getting them engaged and involved, right? Giving them the right environment to want to be there is how you make it happen. Michelle Sikirka is the president of the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Every time we have you, you learn something new. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Steve. Stay right there. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this.